This is a fantastic question, and one that I will try my best to explain in three minutes. So let's talk about Turkana Boy and how his discovery shaped the way that we view ancient humans. Turkana Boy was found in Turkana Lake, which is named after the Turkana people. I feel like this nomenclature is fairly self-explanatory. The lake is located in the north of Kenya, and shows evidence of early human habitation dating back almost four million years. Turkana Boy's remains were excavated from lake sediments in 1984. And while finding human remains at the lake is one thing, this one was especially interesting. Unlike most of the other instances of human remains, this skeleton was 40% complete, which is to date the most complete skeleton of an early human we have ever found. Before this, the lack of complete specimens made it very difficult to determine how early humans walked, talked, and moved. So a find like this allowed archaeologists to be able to create symmetry between the sides of the body and be able to infer almost a complete skeleton. The remains were that of an adolescent Homo erectus. I know I said Homo erectus. Anyway, this is especially important because Homo erectus are one of our direct ancestors, meaning that understanding their lineage is important to understanding how we got to be the way we are. And these guys don't matter because they're all dead. Fuck them. Turkana Boy had come to rest in the lake nearly 1.5 million years ago, as indicated by the layers of sediment that he was deposited in. It is unclear exactly how he died, but because his skeleton is so complete, archaeologists were able to learn quite a lot about this boy's life. By looking at his pelvis, we know that he was male, and by analyzing his teeth, they were able to figure out that he was probably around 8 or 9 years old at the time of his death. In the 1990s, when they were piecing the skeleton together, they assumed that he may have had scoliosis, or dwarfism. Meaning that despite the fact that the skeleton was so intact, scientists were a little bit wary about using it as a representative sample because of these deformities. However, recently, reanalysis has been undertaken on the body, and they learned that these previous conclusions were false. Turkana Boy did suffer from a herniated disc in his spine, but there's no evidence of dwarfism or scoliosis, and it was literally just because the scientists put the skeleton together wrong. This find also helped us learn that Homo erectus walked upright. His feet were arched, meaning that he was capable of walking long distances on two legs, and his pelvis would have been located directly over his legs, meaning that he walked upright, and his little mitts would have been capable of carrying things. This also would line up with the timeline of Acheulean hand axes, or stone knives found at the site. This could indicate that there was some sort of sedentary settlement here. At the time of Turkana Boy's life, this area was actually very, very lush, but the changing climate of the world 1.5 million years ago was causing it to totally become a savanna, which is most likely why this lake bed has so many instances of human remains. It probably would have been a very good place to go if everything else is savanna. When analyzing skeletons this old, archaeologists are also very interested in learning about cranial capacity or encephalization. This helps track the development of the human brain and how it got to be big like this. It is estimated that if he lived to reach adulthood, his cranial capacity would have been about 910 cubic centimeters. For comparison, an adult male human today would be about 1500 cubic centimeters. It's also important to note that this guy was probably about 5'3", and that's around as tall as he was going to get. Due to the harsh environments of the time, ancient humans had to mature very quickly in order to uh, reproduce before they fucking died, meaning they stayed pocket-sized. So I guess never underestimate the things you can learn from a dead child. Also, for those of you who've been with me for a while, I've turned on my Q&A, so if you have any video suggestions, please leave them there.